Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to explore using Mavis to add voltage-controlled wave folding to Grandmother. By default, the wave folder on Mavis is actually manually controlled via the fold knob in the utilities section. But because it's a gain-based wave folder, I can actually use a trick and add a VCA ahead of the wave folder to control the volume of the signal being fed into the wave folder. And that is effectively the same as adding voltage control to the wave folder itself. So to accomplish this, I'm going to begin by patching the Eurorack level output on the back of Grandmother. And that's going to get patched into the fold input on Mavis. We're going to be auditioning and monitoring the patch via Mavis's output because we're using Grandmother to feed into the wave folder and the filter in the VCA. And we're using the VCA on Grandmother for the creative duty of adding voltage control to the wave folder. So the next step that I want to do is take the gate output on Grandmother and feed it into the Malt and the Utilities section. I'm doing this because I want the gate to go to multiple places in the patch. So the first place it's going to get patched to is the gate input on Mavis. And this patching is going to make it so that when I play the keyboard or I use the sequencer, I'll trigger the ADSR on Mavis and we'll be able to hear our voice. <laughs> Right now we're listening to oscillators one and two on Grandmother with oscillator two actually set to a sawtooth, but I'm gonna go ahead and change that to a triangle and oscillator one is also set to a triangle. So from there, I'm gonna patch another copy of my gate signal to the sync in in the modulation section of Grandmother. And this is because I want to use the sample and hold output on Grandmother and by patching this to the sync in, it's going to make it so that the sample and hold only updates on a key press or when the sequencer is playing, and it will synchronize the movement to the music. From there, I'm going to take another copy of the malt, and I'm also going to patch it into the sample and hold gate input on Mavis, and this is going to allow us to get a second set of random voltages that are also in sync musically, and then we can have two different random signals go to different places in the patch just for making it sound a little bit more interesting and adding some movement. So now we need to prepare Grandmother to add the voltage controlled wave folding to Mavis. And the way we're going to do that is by setting the VCA mode on the VCA to drone. And then I'm gonna patch the one plus two output on the utility mixer of Mavis to the VCA amount in. And that is a voltage input that allows us to control the volume level of the VCA. So next, I'm going to take the sample and hold output on Grandmother, and I'm going to patch that into the one input on the utility mixer. And then I'm going to take the attenuator output on Mavis, and that's going to go to the two input on the mixer. You'll notice I have nothing patched into the attenuator on Mavis, but if you look at the panel, there's a small plus five in parentheses next to the attenuator labeling, and that lets me know that there is a five volt offset voltage that's normal to the attenuator when nothing is plugged into it. So I can now use the attenuator knob to just add a certain amount of voltage into my patch. And this is going to be especially helpful when we add modulation into the wave folding, just to be able to get it into the right range that we want to hear. So let's begin by turning the one knob about halfway and also the attenuator about halfway, and we'll hear how this sounds. So what you should be able to hear is that the wave folder is slightly increasing and decreasing with every note that I play randomly. And if I turn the one knob all the way up, we'll hear that much more dramatically. One thing you'll notice is that when I have the sample and hold modulation at full strength, it allows me to actually add silences onto certain notes. But if I don't want it to ever be able to hit silence, this is where the attenuator knob will come in because I can add a certain amount of offset. And this is going to allow me to control the level of the quietest signal that the sample and hold is able to generate from the wave folder. So let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> So 
So now you can hear I've eliminated most of the silences created by the wave folder modulation. I have a little sequence that's loaded into Grandmother, and let's take a listen to how it sounds while it's running with this modulation occurring. <laughs> So as you can hear, this allows us to get a lot of interesting movement within our sequence as the timbre is shifting around inside of the wave folder. The next thing that we're going to do to add a little bit more movement into the patch is take the sample and hold output on Mavis, and I'm going to feed that into the cutoff input on Mavis. And that's going to make it so that I have an extra set of random values that are moving the filter around while the sample and hold on grandmother moves the wave folder around. So if I reduce the cutoff on the VCF a bit, and maybe also add a little bit of LFO modulation to modulate the cutoff. Let's give a listen to how that sounds. <laughs> So as you can hear, this just allows us to hit even more timbres than just the wave folder alone because we have a little bit of wave folding ahead of the filter. Now, one way that we can push this even further is if we take the LFO output on Mavis, and I'm going to feed it into the attenuator on Grandmother. And then I'm going to take the output of the attenuator, and I'm going to feed it to the cutoff input on the filter. So this filter is before the VCA, which then hits the wave folder and then hits the second filter. And what that's going to allow me to do is play with the amount of harmonics that are able to hit the wave folder. And to take advantage of this, I'm also going to set my oscillator 2 to a sawtooth wave so that when the filter is closing, it's going to reduce the harmonics of that wave and vice versa. And this will add even more timbral variation into the sequence that we have playing. <laughs> One last step I'm going to take is add a little bit of spring reverb, which I currently have on the send and return of my mixer, so we can add a little bit of ambience into this patching. So as you can hear, Mavis serves as a great companion to Grandmother that allows us to both expand the modulation capabilities, but also all of the timbres that you wouldn't be able to accomplish just with Grandmother alone.